Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So uh, today we get a little uh, <laughs> kind of a non-standard deal for me. Uh, I went out and bought a woodchuck tool. Um, I have a bunch of plastic that I have to deburr, and I decided that the uh, uh, the router was probably the best way to do it. Um, so I went and bought a uh, little router cable um, and uh, insert plate and some other stuff. So uh, I got to do a little modification to mount my Kuki uh, plunge router that I have uh, to it. So um, there's uh, kind of an odd uh, screw pattern to mount the, the, the router to the uh, adapter plate. So uh, we're going to show how, to, uh, how an alternate way of measuring that uh, uh, or transferring that pattern, I should say. So uh, let's uh, go over to the mill and uh, we'll uh, check out this plate and, um, and get this thing hooked up so we can uh, do, this, do this job, okay? Okay, so here's the uh, my new uh, router table plate, and this is you know a blank one from these guys, the Rockler guys, and uh, so there's the the base plate off of my router, and uh, these little countersunk holes here um, are the what the router will mount to uh, this plate with from underneath. Um, so these flatheads will go through here and mount it to the router and hold it on center here. Now, here's my problem is, you know, the rotational thing doesn't really matter too much, but uh, I'd like to kind of be centered up. And um, so, you know, how do, we, uh, <laughs> how do we transfer this pattern to here, right? I don't have measurements for this. And there's no good way to uh, um, get this concentric with that and then transfer them transfer those holes uh, you know unless I make I turn a little plug or you know do some fussing around with that well I don't want to do all that stuff so what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump up on the mill here on the mini pallet and uh, we're gonna clamp this down and center up on this we'll indicate that in and then we'll go around and we'll measure the position of each one of those holes with using the DRO so we're gonna use the the mill kind of as a, uh, a measuring machine so we'll zero here, and we'll come over here, and we'll zero up on that, or we'll indicate that, and then we'll read that difference from zero, and then we'll move around. Now this isn't, one of the problems here is this is not a symmetrical pattern. Um, there, there's some clocking, uh, they, they put an odd pattern in here um, so that this thing would be, or there's other accessories that go on here that uh, it clocks the orientation of. So in their infinite wisdom, they... <laughs> They put this silly pattern on there, and uh, um, and because this this router or this plate only fits on the router one way, so uh, I got to be careful which way I uh, I put it on so that the switch is in the right place and all that. So anyway, so we'll measure this, and then um, using this a similar setup, we'll clamp this plate up on the mini pallet, and uh, and then go ahead and put those holes in it. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so here's the here's the router plate problem here. And this is this oddball um, hole centers on this uh, on the bottom of the router, and they're um, they're flathead screws. So we want to pick up these locations accurately. So what I've done, I got the mini pallet here, and then um, to kind of square it with the world, I used a couple of gauge pins here, um, and uh, let me slip that in there. And I shoved it up against the uh, the edge of this to kind of square it with the world, okay? And then I just bumped the indicator there. Um, and then I've already picked this hole up here. So what I want to do is I want to get an accurate uh, position based on the center point uh, coordinate. Um, and we'll go ahead and do this next one. Uh, I'll show you how I did it. Take that indicator out. So this pin here, uh, this is another gauge pin, 335 diameter. It fits that, it's got a little tiny step in the top there that I can just kind of, kind of pick up. So what I do is I, well, let's just do it. <clears throat> How about that? All right. And I just moved pure X here. Now these particular holes I'm lucky are lined up with one another, but the upper two I don't think are. They're kind of weird. So what I'm doing is I'm just 
kind of eyeballing it. Okay, and then when it goes into that little step, I say, okay, that's pretty close. Then I switch over to my indicator. And I use this one here when I'm um, doing small holes that are um, close to the spindle center line here. Um, it's kind of my favorite for that. Well, I'm gonna have to stick my head in the um, stick my head in the. Oh no, I'll just do it out here. Okay, so according to this, it's not in line. Well, at least it's not in line with those holes. The point is. This gets me pretty close. Okay, that's good. It gets me pretty close easily within the range of the indicator, so I'm going to take those readings now. So this is 2.3258x, and the y position is negative uh, 1.7. Two nine eight. I'm pretty close to the other one, but not quite. The other one was one point seven three six two. Okay, so then uh, you know, kind of rinse and repeat here. Take that out, and then uh, we'll move over and, and snag these other ones. And you can see that one's. My arm's not in the way. You can probably see that one is a mile off uh, uh, in Y to this other one. So, pick that one up. So, it, it's pretty surprising what you can, um, you know, with a little practice, what you can do with your, uh, with your eyes. And I mentioned that before. Um, okay, that's pretty close. So, uh, trust, you know, practice with your eyes too, right? It's important as well as practicing with your hands because your eyes see things that uh, that uh, if, if you let them Those numbers down. Um, X is two point one two three eight, and Y is one point seven one two six. Okay, one more, and then uh, we can transfer those over to the other plate. Okay, so we're going to put this up here, uh, this insert plate, and then you know we want to square it with the world here. So I'm just going to use a parallel back here, and we'll just push that up against the parallel. And uh, side to side doesn't matter too much in this case. And then we're just going to um, lightly clamp it down. And we're only drilling some relatively small holes, so um, um, you know we don't need to be clamped to. Uh, like a monkey's uncle here, so uh, we're not using a big hog mill on this or something like that. So, okay, okay. So now we're gonna pick up the center here, and just I'm just gonna quickly do eyeball centric there, right? Just to kind of I always like playing this game here, you know, and see how uh, how close I can get by eye. You know, I kind of challenge myself a little bit and. Uh, and see, now we'll get an indicator. Let's see if they have the end. Right, neutral here. I'll drop this down a little bit. So first I'm just gonna get put it close to the edge and eyeball that space. It's not bad. Okay. 
Like that. Okay, I think I'm, uh, I'm okay to drop in there. And I'm off a little bit. Let's see here. Oops, I wasn't watching which way I was going there. Okay, I'm going clockwise. I'm gonna go anti-clockwise back. Mm -hmm. So let's see, it's 15 thousandths off one way and 10 thousandths off the other way. So let's zero that up and let's get this out of here. Okay, so now we can go ahead and uh, confidently drill that, uh, um, this pattern here um, in uh, my $60 <laughs> aluminum plate. Okay, so I think we're ready here. Uh, let's see, first hole. Let's do that one first, which was 2.1308, oops, too far, 1.308, and then, let's see, 708, okay, so that's our first position right there. Um, what, what else? Um, I don't know, let's just go for it. So I'm not going to center drill these, I'm just going to start them gently, okay? Okay. And then while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and countersink them. Now what I'm going to do with the countersink is I'm going to shove it all the way up in the jaws. That way, I can get a uh, I can get a good number for my uh, my countersink depth here. I don't like this countersink. I'm going to switch countersinks. This is a, it's a multi-flute, but they're not very free cutting. Uh, that's one of the problems with them. Um, but they don't, um, they don't run eccentric or they don't uh, run out like the, uh, the single flute ones do. Let me, uh, let me grab a, uh, a different countersink there. This is a single flute type here. Let's try that. Oh yeah, a lot better. lost the screw. So I'm, I'm putting the screw in backwards. Hopefully you can see that. This thing needs the tiniest wisp of oil on it here. And um, when I put it in backwards, let's see if I can explain it here. Well, you'll see it when it's deep enough, so. All right, so let's look at that. You'll see a little step all the way around, okay. This is pretty bright here. But there's a little, I can see a little bit of the countersink between the edge of the screw and the, and the surface there, so I know that's deep enough. 
how about if I turn that off and you can hear me talk? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and, and touch into that. And I'm going to zero my quill readout, okay, so I can come back to that spot. I bottomed the I bottom the cutter in the in the chuck so that when I switch between the two tools I can uh, I can pick that up. So anyway, that's the double check that I'm deep enough. Okay, all right. So three more and uh, then we can uh, give this thing a try and see what we get. All right. Well, you guys know nothing simple, right? So when I was installing this uh, uh, to this the router table plate that I did I modified. I managed to bozo one of the screws here and snap it off. It's a little M4 that threads into the bottom of the router here. And you can see the, the remnants of that screw right there. Um, so this is actually good video material here. We'll go ahead and uh, get that screw out of there, okay? Um, so I'm using a, uh, a different indicator. You guys probably haven't seen this before. And this is a, an Alina, uh, made in Switzerland. Um, and it's, a, I call it a last word style, um, but this particular one I keep set up with a, uh, with a real small contact tip, and you can see why I need that in this case here. Let's see if I can get my big fat hand out of the way there. Let's get up close. I have this little tiny counterbore here. Um, you know, it's probably, I don't know, a millimeter deep or something like that, so I'm going to sweep that little edge there. And uh, for those of you guys that uh, use edge finders to find the centers of holes, let's see you do that one, okay? So uh, that's kind of a, a tough, uh, a tough one to do there without chewing it up with the edge finder too. So let's see here. Okay. Now you can't see the dial, and it doesn't really matter for what we're doing here. All right. Well, my initial touching there. Yeah, I'm touching. Okay, well, I, I got lucky there. It's really close. Oops, wrong way. There. Alright, so I'm going to call that good. Alright, so now uh, um, this router is pretty tall in the, in the mill here, so I can't even uh, really have a, a chuck and an indicator, so I'm going to pop out this out of here without dropping it hopefully okay and we'll take this call it out now we can switch over to a little chuck and what we're gonna do first and I've got the router supported so I'll I'll uh, pull back in a minute here so you guys can see the whole setup. What we're going to use is a little spotting drill here and we're going to come down and uh, and spot that um, and actually what I want to do is drill a hole hopefully all the way through the uh, the broken fastener and what that does is it it kind of relieve it allows the uh, the fastener to relax a little bit because you've taken out the center of it and then we're going to use a uh, this is a little itty bitty easy out that uh, square type that I made on the decal for little small screws and we're going to use that to try to tr attempt to get that out of there. So let me, I'm going to go grab a drill bit for that and then uh, we'll, we'll come back here in just a second. Okay, so here's the whole setup here. I've just got this very lightly clamped here. It's got a flat spot on the other side. And then what I've done is since I'm pushing off center here, I just support it under this so that I can I can put a little pressure on that. I'm going to go pretty easy on that, so uh, I don't need a super heavy duty setup there. So, all right, let's. Uh, I got my uh, my spotting drill. I've got my drill that I want to drill through the fastener with, and then uh, I got my little easy out. So let's. We're going to zoom back in and we'll drill that and see if we can get that pecker wood out of there. Okay, so I think we're ready here. Hey. All right. All right. 
mailman came, so well, I don't know if I like the setup. It's a little bit soft. Alright, so I got a pretty good pretty good centering mark there. My setup's not very rigid, but uh, um, it's probably gonna be okay. Put it this way, I'm gonna go for it. Alright, so See if we can get a hole through the fastener. So this was a uh, um, a zinc plated fastener, which was crap. Actually, it's all I had in a, a M4 available to me. So the big old ox wrist uh, managed to twist the head off. Yeah, you can you see you can probably see the whole thing moving as I push on it a little bit. So I'm trying to go pretty easy and the, the, the screw may have bottomed in the hole too, it was pretty long so hopefully uh, we'll be able to feel it when it goes through yeah you can see I'm in there pretty far now come on little buddy a little more <laughs> Lovely, huh? <laughs> Gotta love it. I'm getting pretty close now. But... Oh, there, okay, I felt it there. Okay, so I got through the fastener. Alright. Now, um,. I think I'm gonna put a little penetrating oil on that and then uh, we'll get the easy out in there. Okay, so I put some penetrating oil on that and I let it, I let it sit. And now the fun begins. So this is a little, a little uh, square easy out that I've made um, um, out of a, actually that's a drill bit I think that I ground. Um, you want something a little bit hard um, so that it bites in there. And uh, let's see, now I need a turning, a turning tool here. We'll use a, uh, actually you know what, do I have a little, yeah. Use this little cutie pie. Well, there's a little cutie pie here. Uh, Adam will like this one. This is a. Uh, who makes this one here? Uh, this is a Greenfield here. That's a little cutie, huh? So we'll use that that guy to uh, get some leverage on that. Okay, cross your fingers, boys. Let's see, oh, what the hell's going on here? Come on, come on, get up on there. Well, what the? Come on, you piece of junk. Why isn't it grabbing? Oh, I see. I had it crooked. Couldn't tell. Okay. So, first try didn't go. <laughs> Let's go back in there. Let's back this up with something. Back this up with a, a mass. Alright, come on boys. For some reason, my little tap wrench is not grabbing this very good here. 
done satisfactorily. The little pointed screw is slipping off, but huh? Oh, come on, God! I wanted to use this little thing. All right, let's uh, change gears here. Let's go to the old faithful here. I don't know if I'll be able to. There it goes. Okay, just need a little more leverage. All right, you little peckerwood. We're done with you. Yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, so maybe the bottom of the hole wasn't fully tapped. You can see the threads are, uh, the, they're kind of, what, rounded over or whatever, like uh, the hole might not have been fully tapped, so. Okay, hey, we're back to square one. Let's go uh, mount this thing up and, uh, and uh, give it a try. <laughs> All right, so, oops, wrong screw. Still don't have the right screw that I ordered the correct length. All right. So, we're ready. Ready for a try here. This is just the uh, insert plate and you can get these uh, in different uh, different hole sizes and whatnot. Okay, and uh, so I think we're back where we started here, and I can uh, continue on with my uh, my routering job here. Anyway, we got to do a little repair, and I nicked up the plate a little bit here, uh, getting the screw head out of the hole there, so that pisses me off right now, but uh, um, it's not the end of the world. Um, I don't know. Thanks for watching, guys. That was fun.